Hello there, everyone. Welcome to our live show on YouTube for this week. I'm Chris Manning. He is Evan Damerell. We're going to talk about, obviously, the big breaking Cavs news. Uh, Cleveland signed guard Kevin Pengos on Wednesday. We'll talk about him, what the native of Ontario, Canada, brings to Cleveland, or what he could theoretically provide. We'll talk more about Ben Simmons, and we'll take some of your questions in the last segment. So if you're on YouTube, go in the chat and hit questions for us and drop them there. Bonus points if you ask like non-Ben Simmons questions, I would say. And uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button. If you have not already, we want to hit our goal of 300 band of this week. And guys, we need you to hit that subscribe button. If everyone that listens to the show on a daily basis, hit subscribe right now. We would smash that goal immediately. So if you're listening oh, to this, have like a quintillion subscribers, we'd be the most subscribed to YouTube channel in history. Well, our growth would be tremendous. Okay. That, and I don't like sounding the like my is. genius. Okay. Anyway, but if you, if I'm going to, if you're listening to this in audio form and you feel like I'm trying to guilt you right now, it's because I am hit that subscribe button. Do us a solid. Today's show is also brought to you by Wednesdays on the locked on NBA channel. It's small market meets big market. Wednesdays in Lockdown NBA. Jake Madison from Lockdown Pelicans and John Kralis of Lockdown Settles. Go around the NBA for a look at the NBA week from all angles. Follow the Lockdown NBA podcast today on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Evan. So what's up? First hey. off, how are you? Good. In our third segment, we're opening with Judah's question at the top because Judah is our man. He comes to every locker room sesh. He's come to every live stream. The coolest listener of Locked on Cavs is Judah. Definitively, yeah. bar none. If he's in our Discord server, he gets a special Judah role and like ascends him above, <laughs> slightly below moderator. Yeah, fair. Um, but how I'm are good, you, buddy? Though, I'm good. Uh, we're going to be locked on glasses, verified, and Cavs soon. My glasses are in the mail. Um I shared this with Chris off air, but I'll get in the nitty gritty. I went to see an ophthalmologist because as a type one diabetic, you need to see an eye doctor and my blood vessels are leaking behind my eyes from straining them too much, but everything else is healthy. So hopefully the glasses fix that. So how are you doing good? Um, I made some very delicious air fried cauliflower for dinner. Oh, did you season it or did she just straight up put like a, Oh yeah. Had a cauliflower oh, in the air. Yeah. Season it. Seasoned it. <laughs> So that's like the most white person dish ever. If you just no, uh, so like avocado, avo avocado oil was like the the thing you Ooh. want that high smoke point. Good choice, okay. good choice. Do you ever use um, pepper. rapeseed oil well, at all or grape? I have oil? not. I, I have I have not have heard good things. Also, a high smoke point there. Um, but so it's salt and pepper, and then mm. cinnamon, paprika, Ooh. some cumin, I some like cayenne. Mm-hmm. It was good stuff. It was very good stuff. Air fried as, had some as, sweet fries on the side. It was it was in a little salad. Delightful dinner. As a certified sauce boss, did you sauce it up at all or? Uh, yeah, I did. I had a little uh, Chick Fil A sauce on the side. Oh, like I the, like the tra the traditional. Damn, Chick -fil -A I gotta have dinner at the Manning sometime. I'm just gonna invite myself over. Come, look, come through. Leanne doesn't eat that food, so she was a, she, when she goes out and like has dinner with a friend. I make like more Chris foods. And that cut like a air fried cauliflower is like a very Chris Manning cooks for himself meal. Did you cook like this in college? Because this is gonna be shocking. No, 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 no. I My co and I co for myself college, in college. College, college, me cooking was like rice and beans in a pot with like my friends that I worked with, and we would just like eat like black beans and rice and like budget. Do you want to know what my budget dish was in college? And I was in between like my m m slightly above minimum wage paychecks. Yeah, hit me. It was brown rice with a little bit of barbecue sauce mixed in, and I call it a dirty rice. It was, and I usually would like, you know, cook some chicken or something on the side because chicken breasts and chicken thighs, especially, aren't that expensive. And so 
it wasn't like you know the most sustainable meal but it kept me full and my mom commented that like wow you're really skinny when i came home from winter break so my parents like i haven't been i haven't been i haven't been eating actual food mom i haven't had a vegetable in seven months but evan let's talk about kevin pang let's talk let's talk about kevin pango so here's the the 101 if you're not familiar with who kevin pangos is 28 years old uh, played college with Kelly Olynyk, uh, every Cavs fan's favorite player at Gonzaga. Uh, Alona, was a, Alona is canceling Kevin Pangos on Twitter as we speak right now. Yes, um, played uh, was the conference player of the year his last year. Went undrafted in 2015. Has played his entire professional career overseas, uh, Spain and Lithuania. Where's where he's? He went to Spain and then to Lithuania, then played for Barcelona in Spain, and then last year he played with. Zenit St. Petersburg in Russia. Um, He is from Ontario, has played for the Canadian national team. Again, 20 years old last year, his first team all Euro league while averaging 13 and a half points, 6.7 assists and shooting 52% from the field and 39% from three. Uh, His contract, according to his agency, who told this news first to Bobby Marks of ESPN, two years, 3.5 million. Only the first year is fully guaranteed. Evan, do you have like a take on this as a as a signing not too far away from training camp? Well, at first I had to double check if um, if uh, New Market, Ontario, if Winnipeg was in the same area as Ontario, it's Manitoba. No. But now there's two. No, no. Do you not know your provinces? I, I don't. I talked to Justin no. Rowan on almost a daily basis, but I just wanted to see if there were now two kind of old and washed up uh, Canadians on Cleveland's roster. But in different ways in their payroll, but I don't hate the Pango signing One independent contractor. Okay. That's fair. I mean, yeah, that's fair. I don't hate the Pango's edition though. Cause let's be honest here. Darius Garland is entering his third year at the Cavaliers. And before this, his backups were Dante X and Matthew Delvadova at times, Damian Dotson and Colin Sexton with Dotson, not really being a point guard Sexton, not really having the chops to facilitate an NBA offense. You really look at Exum and Della Vadova as the two primary backups. The Cavs can rely on either of those two, and that kind of hurt Garland long-term because you lean on him heavily because that hurts the offense if he implodes. So I think this is a smart move. And to quote you, Chris, the Cavs are adding an adult to the room. Pangos is 28, so he's the same age as us. And um, it's not a bad thing. He has a ton of experience. I don't think he's ever going to play much at all. He's going to be a break glass in case of an emergency type situation. I think certain reporters thinking that if the Cavs trade Ricky Rubio, they're being awfully lofty thinking Pangos is going to get serious minutes. I just think he's going to be a veteran. He's going to be a nice option. Um, he went on drafted, even though he's 6'2", which is kind of an ideal size for a point guard at the time, but he's a little small now in the grand scheme of things. He just he has a six foot wingspan and he is not athletic at all, but he can shoot. He can move the rock. Those are two things the Cavs need. Um, I don't hate this addition. I don't really see why anyone would get too upset about it. So uh, just uh, not too bad. Maybe maybe if the Cavs go get a Linux, we can have a nice little Gonzaga reunion and Kevin Love just screams internally. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kevin, he got paid a bunch of money by the Pistons, if I'm remembering correctly. I believe so. But hey, man, anything is possible. Good for him. Yeah. Um, get that back, so Kelly. I- yeah, so I, I think the Pangos thing is like fine. I think like there's obviously a big like whole shaped wing on the roster. Um, I tend I I'm just like I already I, I I'm like envisioning just like JB Bickerstaff like playing Isaac Okoro like Luel under Luel Dang under Tibbs level of minutes until they like oh figure out the wing situation. Like if if like oh. Osman and and Windler and all those guys like don't pin out, Okoro's just playing like forty minutes a night. <laughs> He's just like end of the year, just like in a you know ice bath, just recuperating in in Atlanta. Um, but Pangos hey, is to I be th- fair, what? Antonio Lang was a six eight forward out of Duke, and he played for the Suns and the Cavs. He could always you know lace back up and go back out there and play some backup minutes for the Cavs. Yeah, I'm sure he. I'm sure he'd be. You know, his body would just be thrilled to, to, to go through the process of getting ready to play on like two days' notice. Um, Strange. So, like, I think for the Cavs, Anderson Verja played for the team last year. Who would have thought? Sam but, Decker um, could come back. Who knows? Toronto Raptors, Sam Decker. Um, I know. I wonder what he thinks of tax policy. But uh, anyway, uh, so. I have a Pang- joke that I'll say off. No, the we're air. not. We're not. We're yeah. We're we'll. I already went too far. Pangos is like I think a good like break glass in case of a emergency option and backup point guard, right? Like oh, yeah. Rubio has had injuries in the past. Garland obviously hasn't had as many injuries like overall, but like came into the league 
with an injury, missed some time last year. Um, nothing like super crazy, but like in Texan, obviously he's been pretty durable, but missed some time last year for the first time. Like, I think he's, he's the right age. He makes sense. Look, like if, if you get to a point where Ricky Rubio is, you end up trading him at the deadline or something. You're like, okay, look, like we know you're not coming back. We are going to like trade you to a contender and get a second round pick back or whatever. I think Pangos is a guy that like you can then run him out as like your very cheap, affordable, stable veteran backup point guard option. I think he's certainly better than Matthew Delabadova is at Deli at this point in Delhi's basketball life. And you can try him out. That's, and if that's it does a bold statement on your part. And then the year after, if like if it works, then you have a very, very affordable backup point guard. And if it doesn't work, Okay, you go on your merry way. He can go back to Europe, go play for another NBA team, whatever. And and you're you go you know you go back shopping it in the market next summer. I think this is just like good Rubio insurance. I don't you know I don't think he has like the cachet or like even like I don't I I'm not gonna tell you that I'm like have intimate understanding of his game at this point in time. I don't think he has like the flair or like the the cachet that like Rubio does. It's just I, I would doubt he does. But I think like he could be a serviceable NBA player, capable of filling option. I like this as opposed to some of like the younger options. Again, the cost is like for again for a team that like doesn't actually have like cap space to do anything significant and didn't all off season like this. This makes sense to me. It's kind of like out of nowhere a little bit, but like I, I kind of get it. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And you know who else is significant, Chris? Our friends at Sweat Block. So there are a few things in life that are just aren't fun to talk about. One of them is excessive sweating. You know when you're sweating through your shirts for no reason, it's embarrassing, right? Some of you may know that I personally have dealt with this. When I speak in public, I can't help but sweat through my shirt. Now, listen. I know this isn't life and death, and there are much worse problems in the world, but let's be honest. In the moment, it feels like a big deal. Nobody likes to pit out during an important speech, interview, or first date. I'd much rather not worry about it, and that's why I use Sweatblock's antiperspirant wipes. Sweatblock is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You simply apply it the night before bedtime, go to bed, and the next morning you wake up, wash, and go about your day without worrying about sweat, guaranteed. Like, for real, I, I put it on before the show. I worked out pre-dinner, uh, took a quick shower, threw on some Sweatblock, and I'm thinking... You know, this is a great opportunity for Wednesday's Locked on Cavs Live. I know this will sound too good to be true, though, but I literally only have to use sweat block once a week, and it keeps me dry the whole time. No more pitting out, no more picking my shirts based on what will hide sweat better, and I can work great with confidence. If you or someone you love is dealing with this, you have to check out sweat block. Chris, I love you like a brother. You need to check out sweat block. Get it today with 20% off at sweatblock.com and promo code locked on or at Amazon or CVS. Also got to tell you about our friends at Direct TV. Does it sound familiar? You've got one device to let you catch the game live. You have another, you know, you're going into your parents' app to watch the good stuff. You're using your phone to watch like sports highlights. Like it is your 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 eyes are everywhere. And like look, I want to tell you about a way to get a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings you your live TV on-demand favorites all together in one place like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required, and your content varies by package. Evan, do you have any final Pangos thoughts, some penultimate Pangos thoughts before we get out of here? Some uh, punctual Pangos thoughts before we get out of here? When you say get out of here, we're moving on to the next segment, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm going to hit out, it. I, when you say get out of here, it usually means running the show. And I mean, that's, that's I true. That's true. That's true. This is only like a 30 ish minute stream. So we are, you know, uh, a little tighter ship, a little tighter yeah. ship today. Tighter ship. So, so, Chris, can, we are, so Chris can get his sleep. Well, you know, we, we, the basketball gods, I should, the AKA, the guess we need to, uh, his little market and Rubio will be speaking to the media on Thursday. So we will react to that uh, mm -hmm. for us. I have a little and, something uh, that, that comes before that that might whet your whistle. Hint, hint. Well, we can talk about that. And then uh, I already recorded an episode for Friday where if you watch it on YouTube, I'm wearing the – I just because I recorded it a little bit before this, I'm wearing the same shirt and hat in that video with Ricky O'Donnell from SB Nation talking about Larry Marketing. Chris, this is actually a cry for help. I can tell you need folks to support the pod by subscribing yeah, hit, more look, on YouTube. Hit subscribe so, so I can buy a clothes. new hat, a new shirt. Yeah, I, I need support. Um, 
He does. Unbelievable. Like, you know, we've, we've hit hard times here on Lockdown Cap. It's not we really, we're still, we're still, but do you, you have any final Pangos thoughts as we kind of get ready to move on here? No, not really. Like I said, I think it's a good uh-huh. signing. It's just, it is what it is. It's not nothing really to lose any sleep over to that min signing. They dipped into their MLE, so the Cavs finally did use their mid-level exception a little bit. So hit, woo! There we go. Hang the there banner, baby. Um, yeah. Hit the bell. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, retire that jersey. Other than but that, uh, not a huge deal. Okay, so let's move on to Ben Simmons. Uh, Mark Stein from Substack. Uh, Mark Stein, the famous NBA. I don't really know how to like refer to like them now that they don't have like a necessary like outlet. I guess I have to like remember like the name, but it's like, but it's like, so like Spencer Ackerman is like a a reporter uh, who has a substack called forever war. So I would be like his from his newsletter forever wars on substack, but I don't like know the name of Mark Stein's like substack newsletter. Like if I was referring to like Tom Ziller, I would be like, good morning. It's basketball. Uh, on Substack from Tom Ziller, like I, I don't it's, remember it's like the, the publication it's, name. It's the Stein line, I believe. Okay, okay, oh, so the Stein, Mark line, Mark Stein, Stein, the Stein line, Mark Stein, just ev- everyone knows Substack's Mark Stein. the Stein line. Yes, so he uh, reported in his power rankings that the Cavs like still are interested in uh, Ben Simmons. They would like to, you know, wait around and maybe get involved in that. I, Evan, I nothing has really changed for me. Nope. I just kind of like look at this and I look at like the market and it's like, I don't, I don't know if a resolution is coming anytime soon. And it certainly doesn't feel like it. And I just, I just look at the Cavs roster now and I'm just like, I, I have no conception of like what a offer the Cavs that the Cavs could put together that would actually compel Philly to trade Ben Simmons to them. Yeah. Well, I, I've kind of done some sleuthing on it myself and I wrote this for Facebook bulletins right down Euclid, just so you know, to help you with these titles here. Uh, the Cavs are probably have to get a third team involved in order to really get Ben Simmons because their most tradable asset was Larry Nance and they traded him to Portland to get a first round pick in order to acquire Larry Markkinen. Um, after that, it's their 2022 first round pick. And I don't think Philly has much interest in that. And then it's Kevin Love, which, you know, doesn't do much. And I mean, Ben Simmons is here's my frustration. You can crystallize the Ben Simmons experience based on what happened last year in the playoffs against the Hawks, but you should not let that happen because it does not speak to the volume of player that Ben Simmons is. Jackson Frank put up a good point today saying that. If the Sixers let this play out and let Ben play 10 games, let him average 19, 19, 9, 9, and 7 or something absurd like that, or like 19, 9, and 9 with a couple of steals and blocks as well, they could really boost his trade value again. Because Ben said, or at least Brian Windhorst said that Ben Simmons told the Sixers, it's not my fault that you guys can't boost my trade value. Which, which, well, which like also just like, like, it's it's just like, I love like the, the posturing that is just like leaked. It just, I, none of it ever makes like any sense to me, to be quite honest with you. But, other than that, it's Colin Sexton, who the Cavs aren't exactly thrilled they have to might commit it's a bunch of money to, so they're going to try and wait and see if they can let this drag out to a restricted free agency next year and see what he gets to the open market and just figure it out from there. Or they could find a team that's willing to extend him now and trade him, but Philly isn't a team that's interested in extending him from what I've gathered, so they'd have to get a third team involved. And I floated Memphis as an idea. I think that makes sense. Like if you can maybe pry Dylan Brooks or Kyle Anderson from the Grizzlies and then reroute one of those two to Philly alongside Kevin Love, that's not a terrible, and maybe like a first round pick for your troubles too, just because that's another asset for the Sixers um, to use. I don't think that's a terrible thing, but I do think it's still out of the realm of possibility because Memphis is a pretty, I've questioned a lot of their moves they made. They feel like they haven't made steps towards building around John Morant and kind of like pushing the needle forward a little bit they're kind of treading water a little bit and still rebuilding slash retooling so well but but i but i think they're like consciously like look like we're not gonna win the title why don't we just like like but it's so it's like we're we're gonna like we're in a really good conference let's like take a smarter step back and like still have the pieces in place and then like we can let the young core pieces still kind of carry us right like i i think that for me is sort of um that like they i think they're what they've done is that is sort of fine like them not like throwing everything at it now to kind of make it work right like, i think i think, I think they've taken advantage of situations i think they've just taken advantage of like situations where teams are a little bit desperate and they can extract value out of that so oh, then if they yeah. want to make a trade in 12 months they're positioned to do so if they want to take another big swing in in several months they can do so right like i i think they're they and they're, they're drafting really well like they're doing oh, things that are yes. smart i i think and figuring stuff out so I, i'm i'm pretty like if the Cavs were like we're in i would take 
Memphis's position over the Cavs like 10 out of 10 times. So well, I say this goal. all the time. I'm envious of Watch on Grizzly, Sean Coleman, and the fact that he gets to cover one of the most fun, young, and exciting teams in the league. Uh, but other than that, like the Cavs would have to get a third team involved because they just do not have the ammunition to entice Philly for a t- for a two team trade. And that's where it can kind of get a little messy. But I think just based on how I have an understanding of how the marketing trade worked, if Philly sets a price for Cleveland, I do have faith in Kobe Altman's ability if he really wants to go get something to go acquire it because from what I've gathered, the Bulls didn't want Larry Nance, which still blows my mind. They wanted a first and a second for marketing, and Kobe Altman went and did that by trading Nance to Portland and then turning it into a three-teamer. So it's an interesting way. It's a bit of a dick-measuring contest between Maury and Clutch Sports and Ben Simmons right now too. I do think his value is pretty low, but I don't think it's as low as people might think it is because they're kind of just baking their take based on what happened against Atlanta, which again, going up against and not do, committing to that dunk is still a pretty zany move, but it, you'd have to get another team involved, I think, if you're, yeah, if you're so like, Cleveland. Yeah, so I did a uh, thing with SB Nation NBA and uh, collaborated with Ricky O'Donnell and Paul Hudrick from Liberty Ballers, their 76ers community. And like, like was one of the Cavs rules, one of the teams that could like make a trade for Simmons and have it make sense. And then I provided some analysis on the trade that they kind of proposed to me. And the trade that they, Ricky and Paul came up with was Rubio Garland and Okoro for in a pick for Simmons. And I was just like, no, no. like I, no. I, I understand it's a talent play. I understand like all of that, but like, like the, the, I think like you could see a world where the Cavs like maybe do this. Like I literally wrote in the piece and I don't know if I even I totally agree with this, but like, I think in reality, like they might do that to some extent, but like, I don't know why Philly would do that. Right. Like, I don't think that helps them in any meaningful way immediately. It doesn't give them like a, the wing shooter. They kind of need like it, it's, it's combustible there in that sense. And, like, I just think the Cavs are, if they're trading for Ben Simmons, like, I think like they would probably like to find a home for Kevin Love and get that off that money. And I also just literally wrote here, this is my last line. So this is where you and I, I think agree here. Simmons to Cleveland might just be too complicated to do unless a third team gets involved. I, I, I think that's a reality. Um, Kyle Newback, I should also shout out him from the Philly voice, uh, does a really good job covering the Sixers wrote a piece there that went up on Wednesday, um, kind of outlining the Cavs is like a talking kind of mentally working through that and, if you want to read something longer on that from a Philly inside does a really good job covering the team. I uh, go, go check out Kyle's work. I'll, I'll link that in our show notes. Um, but I, th- I mean, I think we should leave Ben Simmons there. We're going to come back, take some questions. Well, we're never going to Ben Simmons. Like he's never going to go away. Well, no, Ben Simmons will go away and he's like a Sacramento King and he's playing on the fourth California team. Or as I would like to call it team Ladybird. Hmm. <sighs> Good name, Playing, God. I'd be if, as if, a Ben Simmons. Greta, believer, Greta Gerwig just rocking a Ben Simmons jersey courtside, baby. Let's go. But as a Ben Simmons believer, I'd be so unhappy that he has to be coached. But great day gets to play at Tyrese and Buddy. I mean, he could he, he get fired. Luke Fox, Luke Luke get fired. That's Luke you know, Walton. coaches go, player players are the league, coaches come and go. But anyway, Evan, we got to tell everyone about our friends at Built Bar. Bill Bar is celebrating the freedom of choice of protein bar. Do you know that Bill Bar has so many delicious flavors? I, of course you do. You listen to the show, you hit subscribe on YouTube, and you and you love I Bill Bar like Bill us. Bar. You love Bill Bar. I love them. I eat them all the time. You, you just say that confusingly. Right, there you go. Coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie. Those are some of the great flavors. Evan's favorite cookies and cream. Um, I got to go right now. I, I love the strawberry. It just tastes like a chocolate-covered strawberry. If you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box where you get two of each of the nine flavors in one pack, and you can try them all and find out which one is your favorite, too. Remember, 17 aging grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty and all healthy. Order today. And get that cookies and cream, that strawberry, or whatever it is you like. Built Bar is also the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that is promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. It's that time of year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this football season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest half-million-dollar NFL Mega Contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL Survivor Contest, open now at BetOnline. 
head to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive a 100, yes, 100% welcome bonus. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the Thursday, September night season opener, which is tomorrow between the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Peep that helmet on Chris Manning's shelf and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wage will be refunded up to $25 for new customers only when signing up using promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, do not wait and take advantage of all the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts, and don't forget to also use promo code Locked On. All right, let's go into questions. As promised, first one from our friend Judah, the says, man, hey, hope- the myth, the legend. Hey guys, hope you're both doing well. Can the Cavs trade for someone before the season? Um, I would say like maybe, but like I just don't really know like who that would be. Ben Simmons, be. obviously. But if it's not Ben Simmons, like I just I don't I think like what ha- what's going to happen here is you run into the season like with marketing with Allen, with Rubio, like it's kind of like your quote unquote, like off season acquisitions. Obviously I was on the team last year, but you resigned him. You bring in Mobley as your big draft pick. Like, I, I think you're just, I, I saw it. Like I, I saw someone on Twitter be like the Cavs just clearly kind of believe that like they think their, their guys are positioned to um, like they're ready to rock. I think it's sort of just like, they don't have the cap space to upgrade on some of them and they're banking on internal growth. And I, I, the more and more I thought about this team, I really think they're like a year away, but to answer the Judas question, I think trades are just kind of not really a thing right now. No, I mean, let me ask you this, Chris, uh, pop up a bubble here. Evan Dammer, I'll ask Chris Manning, what do you think is the most Cavs move possible? The Cavs could possibly make to acquire a player. I think it's getting buddy healed somehow. Like I would actually rip my hair out if they got. Buddy I healed. think it. I I think it would be trading, doing something with like next year's first round pick with like way too light of protections. Oh, that's like ooh, my stomach flipped. Being being like, hey, like we can get like an average small forward with like for like a top five protected pick. Like, hey, we're gonna trade. We're gonna trade like our top like five protected twenty twenty two pick Barnes. for or for like TJ Warren. Like that's just dumb asset management. Like I think oh. TJ Warren's good, but he's coming off an injury, and like, that's just not like value you should trade your your high picks for. Like, no. Like that's again, rebuilds asset. don't let rebuilds do not last forever. You're gonna see a point where the Cavs like, whether it's with Sexton or Garland or a core or whomever, or if it's Allen and marketing in a year or like whoever they're going to cash in some of these young pieces, not pay all of them and then get veteran talent. That's better. Now this organic kind of growth, the course core six doesn't exist for these teams. Like it just doesn't really work that way. Core four don't get barely too emotionally exists. attached to a lot of these young players. I think they're all available for the right price. Like Chris is. Yeah. Getting. And, and I, and I think like a year from now in particular, there could be some configuration is, and, and maybe if the cat and like, if they can, I think, I think one of the smartest, actually, if the Cavs are going to do anything before the season, or I should say specifically before the trade deadline, if they want to be involved in trades, to take a cue from Memphis, buy out Kevin Love, create some cap space to eat short-term money and get picks. That's what I would do. That's my advice. Yeah, that's a really smart move, and I agree. I just want to – I'm pulling one up here. Um, So my this is from my friend Kevin Stinkwitz. I just want to roast him for a second. Uh, he says, I can play with him. Evan, you'll actually meet him at, at Phoebe Bridgers. I'm so excited, dude. Can't wait. Oh my- can't oh wait. Oh my gosh. Can't the wait. She, Let's go. Uh, the fact that she's covering a really good Bo Burnham song just sparks some joy. Well, in it's my also heart it's also very funny that like when well, it's she on enters, her too. Well, but it's she but it's very funny that she enters to I've got a good I've got a feeling by the black head peas. Like it's it's just funny. Like that's just extremely ends with funny. That funny feeling by Bo Burnham, which is about how yes. you feel incredibly uncomfortable with how uh-huh. the world is evolving into vanity and obsession with being online. Yeah, um, just I just wanted to roast Kevin and uh, note that he's going to talk to you a lot about like traffic patterns. Hey, That's just Kevin, what he does. He's a weird guy. The Cleveland Charger having open tryouts soon. Don't <laughs> let your memes be dreams. Go out yeah, there move, and try it. Yeah, move move home, buddy. Um, anyway, uh, question from Yakity Yak One Eleven. Top three all time Canadian Cavs players. So I think there's like the number one all time is very clearly Tristan Thompson. Yeah, it's Tristan Thompson. So I gotta, um, but I gotta go. I gotta do a quick Google search. Canadians who played in the NBA. Nick Stauskas played for the Cavs. He wasn't very good. Sauce Castillo, Anthony, Anthony Bennett. Anthony Bennett. Kevin Pangos will soon play for the Cavs. Andrew Wiggins. Summer League Andrew Wiggins might give Tristan Thompson a run for his money at number one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm Googling, too. because Oh, we find you talking Bailey. Oh, yeah. I forgot he's Canadian. Yes. Um, no. 
Samuel Dallenbear. Did he play for the Cavs, really? No, I don't think so. Um, the Birch, the Google's lying to me. So this, I, th- I think the answer is Summer League Andrew Wiggins, Tristan, Tristan Thompson, Thompson, and Nick Sauskas? Yes. No, Justin Rowan, like, he plays for the Cavs. <laughs> Pargos just, uh, just, Pangos just gets in the top three immediately by like contributing positive minutes because Nick Sauskas like, wasn't that good when it played in like for like Sevilla. Um, um yeah, or Anthony Bennett wasn't good enough to even stick with a Puerto Rican team who was literally brand new, <laughs> and they cut him like literally five days after he signed there. That's still yeah. There's not a lot of Canadian players to play for the Cavs. It's Tristan Thompson, um, Anthony Bennett, obviously Andrew Wiggins, Nick Stauskas, and then there's a bit of a blur there. And then you get to Cabangale, you get to Pangos, you get to. That's Nick Stauskas again. I just Ka- can't Bailey, be- Kaga and Bailey becomes number three when he ma- if he makes the roster over Taco Fall. I kind of, I think he will. But jokes aside, like we talked about this, I think. Look, but like who, who's gonna, Evan? Who? Deal. Yeah, but like, like who's we're gonna, gonna see someone? one of these two, one of those yeah. two, possibly yeah, both of them sharing the floor of the Cavs <laughs> at some point next season. <sighs> Taco Fall and Calvin Gaylay sharing the floor. floor. Chris Manning. When they're when, when they're down like forty points to like the Sixers yeah. or something, you know what I mean? Like they're getting their butts kicked. Like they're in Miami and down like thirty five, and it's like, well, guess we're just gonna play Peng, Pangos and the, and the two big guys, and Jetty Osmond's gonna run around for a little bit, I guess. Like there we tuned go. Larry Nance is tuned in on League Pass, and he just quietly smiles at his house in Portland because the trees are still tall in He's Cleveland. Just e- eating a nice voodoo donut. All right, a uh, question from Justin well, he Ames. Can't eat voodoo donuts he's gluten he intolerant he, he literally instagrammed a picture of the other in his store oh, the other day and said if you one? know you know with a sign of the voodoo donut sign evan i come could have just taken a pitch could have just taken the picture he probably, got a, gluten, he probably got a gluten-free donut fine they sell I'm, those yeah but i i'm just don't I'm just don't. stalling Get out of here. All right, Justin Ames asked, what about trading for Cam Reddish? We've talked about this before. It's I tend happen. to I, yeah, like I, I just look at that and it's like, again, like our, I, I think trading for players that are about to demand new contracts is like extremely complicated. It's also it just, kind of foolhardy on just, the cast part too. In I guess opinion, like, I, at least. But like, I, it's like I get that kind of trade, but I think like if they're going to trade for a wing who's like still kind of young, it's going to be a guy who's already signed the second contract and like doesn't fit in the situation. Like you're looking for like a jetty not like jetty is not uh, like you got to see if you can improve jetty first but like you're looking for like a guy who's like maybe more proven than jetty who just like isn't fitting in his current situation like that's the type of wing i think you're kind of looking for if you're looking for a trade opposed to like a camp reddish or like a guy that hasn't even finished his rookie contract yet it's either that or yeah i just don't think like i know atlanta's asking price is a first round pick and a cost controlled veteran like yeah jetty osmond kind of and the future for uh, like a future first of all, that'd be 2022 would be the answer for Cleveland there with Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But like Chris said, you don't want to be capping and limiting the ceiling of your team because you have to be paying all these players up front, like Garland's extension eligible next year. They're going to have to commit money to Colin Sexton next year if they want to keep him. Reddish would yeah. be as well. Like the Atlanta fell into that pitfall by having to pay John Collins top dollar. Like rightfully so. He had a phenomenal postseason. But I was I remember for the longest time the Hawks didn't want to pay what John Collins wanted, and they ended up doing that. And I think the Hawks will reach their ceiling eventually too because of it. Yeah, I mean they've already hit the point where like they're young, some of their young guys have been moved in and out a little bit. So it just kind of is what it is. Okay. Uh let's take two more questions. First one is from Colin Reddick. Um, is there a surprise player who could get cut at training camp that the team could grab? Someone who might not jump the coach. So I would just say, Evan, for me here, that my only take on this, and I get the intrigue, but it's like I think NBA stuff does works very differently than the NFL, where it's like the guaranteed money, like like the, the uh-huh. talent pool's different. Guys, you know, the money just works very differently. Like I, I think cuts don't work the same way in the NBA that they do in the NFL. And I for that reason, I don't think this stuff really, really happens uh, all that much. Yeah. I mean in terms of surprise cuts, I I think I'd be surprised if Kevin Love is cut right now. I think he's going to be bought out eventually. I genuinely well, do. But I think I hearts. think it, I think it means like looking at like other teams, like looking at like uh, if like the like the opposite side. So like the Browns, for instance, like so okay, like the Browns. Like, I cut, understand the question. They're a hot like yeah yeah surprise player. I mean, I could be misunderstanding. Another team would right. grab. 
because right Kellen so Lund like grab a contender then but on a cheap deal yeah yeah but like so like lebron's cut Kadero hodge and then like the lions pick him up right like like i don't mm-hmm. that sort of like moving Didn't around is training camp <laughs> uh i don't know if he's a i think he's just yeah, I don't he know, roots he, for detroit's but he he is happy yeah, but he's like a, but he's also well like a card he like, beautiful and, toledo ohio yeah, I was just there. Great, great, a lot of great golf courses in Toledo. I got to tell you, the Glass City. Um, but um, Ohio literally went to war with Michigan. There's, there's, there's a very if anyone is that Evan, That's Evan just why said Ohio true. State, and Michigan are actually rivals because the war ended yeah. like twenty years. At, like, uh, twenty years a, after the war ended, they started playing football regularly, and there was still a lot of animosity between both teams because of it. Because a few uh, veterans, I think, played on both teams. There's a, there's a very good podcast called This Day in Esoteric History that did a whole episode about that. It's like 20-something minutes long. Um, Hanif, I uh, can't pronounce his last name. He's this poet from Columbus. You probably follow him on Twitter. Um, really, really good poet um, and just really cool-seeming dude. Uh, he was on there and talked about it. It's very funny. Just a very funny, like American history is like bonkers along the way. It's not pods really good. Um, I know a player that might get cut the casket sign. Who? We can edit on this note if you want, and I'll say it. No, we'll do one more. We'll do one more question after this. Say Andre the name of Drummond then. will get cut by the Philadelphia. Okay. The, you're, the, like, I thought you had like a serious one. And then you're just That's, like, I had that little smirk on my face a little. Yeah. Little, but little like grin. sometimes you, sometimes I mean, you came with like a good idea and, and whatever. Okay. So Listen, Colin has, I mean, I'm, I'm a volume shooter like Colin Sexton. Sometimes I miss, sometimes I hit. All right. So we're going to ask one from friend of the program. Alona, uh, do you, did you guys touch upon how many minutes the non Pangos Kevin will play for the team? How true is the story uh, that he came there's only playing six to twelve minutes? So I think um, yeah, I, I love that the that the, the non Pangos Kevin is like put that on a t shirt or like give me a sticker. Um, I think twelve to fifteen is the cap. Yeah, I think twelve to fifteen, maybe twenty is the cap. It just depends and, on how his calf is feeling. Well, and I would be blown away if he plays back to backs. Same, big same. Um, I think they'll keep like Dean Wade for sure will be on the roster, but he'll be kind of that fourth slash third power forward that plays more minutes when Kevin Love sits. Yeah. Um we had a, I just want to note on this and we had some Colin also Reddick also asked about like dumping Kevin Love. I just think like you can't dump that massive amount of side without giving up real stuff. I th- I think you already have like again like you say it was their last gasp, but like if he showed some and that, and that was and that was but that was even like such a thin margin. Thin. It, yeah, it was like the the like you know like the thought I, process I, behind it was okay, he's gonna play with Kevin Durant and other some of the other best players in the world. It should make him, in theory, look better because people like point to Carmelo Anthony like, in London, but that was a different beast Stay in mellow. itself. Stay mellow, man. But I, I really think, in my heart of hearts, Kevin won't be traded. He'll be bought out. Yeah. Um, and it's just and also a, I a, a stare off on who how much money he wants to give up. Well, and we've seen the going price of like, let's say you want to call Sam Presti and like dump Kevin Love. Uh, to Oklahoma City in some capacity, right? Like let's just, like or a team that has like cap space. You're you're paying a premium to do that, and it is not worth it to me. Like to do that, I don't think. Absolutely not. I I, I and who would Oklahoma City really send back at this point too? Because they gave back Al Horford for Kemba. It's just yeah, but I I think they still have cap space. They do. I mean, in theory, doesn't Detroit have cap space too? If they send back some of their players, like yeah, but like bit of flexibility, like Olenek could come back. That would be bizarre. Um, I, I just think about the Cavs. I, uh, <laughs> She's in the chat right now. She would cut uh, the uh, Cavs if Kelly Olenek was the send off for Kevin Love. A buyout at some point before the deadline, like I mean, the right after the trade deadline, so we can then go sign with someone. Probably is the where this heads. I would guess, unless yeah, like about March. unless it's just because unless it's just like so uncomfortable, which it could very well could be. Like I yeah, like I am like. It is unfortunate because, like, I if you're the Cavs, like, you would, I, I'm sure that, like, you would like everyone to just talk about, like, Mobley and and Sexton and Garland and your two of Isaac and whatever. But, like, there's just going to be a very, like, GQ cover model esque 610 man just hanging around. He's going to have some really sick uh, Ralph Lauren sweaters. Dude, that one sweater he had of a teddy bear doing a kickflip from Ralph Lauren, I looked it up the other day. 
that thing was five grand when it first came out. Now it's like because the hype beast, it's like fifty thousand dollars. And I'm like, damn, I'm a, Devin, I'm a, buy me some clothes. I'm a print GQ reader, and the uh, I get very stressed when I'm like reading like the, like so I was reading like the Jason Sudeikis profile last month. Um, very mm-hmm. good profile. And uh, I was like looking at like how much like the like he, the fits he was dressed in cost, and I was just like, oh, like this, this is, is how this rich is lots dress. of money. And yeah, they I, hire people to buy those clothes for them, and then so and then dress them on a day to day basis. It's yeah. like being like a first grader, pretty much, when your mom picked out your clothes and your parents paid and picked out for your clothes too. But like the caveat is now that you pay for the clothes and pay for the stylist. Yeah, and they like look much better than the clothes you're wearing in first grade. That you then like dump like you like get have like pop tart crumbs on your. On Dude, your my chest. fit was fire as hell in first grade. I was an LL Bean Gap kid. Shout outs to oh Sue. God. She dressed me well. Mom, you watch right now. Doubt Bo- it. Bo- but thank you. Bougie Madonna County boy right there. Um, but that is going to be it. We're going to wrap it up there. This has been Lockdown Cavs Live on YouTube. Find Evan on Twitter at Mnot Evan. Find me on Twitter at CWM Rights. Find Evan's work at Rights on Euclid. That's at Facebook Bulletin. Fear the Sword. Check me Find out at your sub Yeah, uh, $20 in a souvenir. Subscribe. Great name. I subscribed today because uh, Chris didn't share it with me. I just thought you would. I'm not trying to force things on people. I want th- I want that to be somewhere where like if people like generally want to like follow along with what I'm doing and randomly like read some random other thing I'm, I want to write in in whatever, just go there. It's never gonna cost money. Um, just do it. Yeah, it's fun. Just I usually, it. yeah, just do it, man. Just, um, just and it. hit the, the mic, sword, go, I'm, folks. I'm up rocks uh forbes bunch of other places cleveland magazine but if you get the print issue of cleveland magazine i don't have it on my desk otherwise i'd show you i have a browns one page preview in that issue uh salute to my buddy dylan stewart for giving me that work so anyway that's gonna be it hit that subscribe button on youtube thumbs up on the video hit that notification bell back tomorrow talking what no judah thank you Thank you, Judah. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow talking about the Rubio and marketing and media availability. Uh, and Friday, Ricky O'Donnell. Do you, do you, do you want to go live for that there. one? Or do you just want to riff? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll text off air. We'll text off oh. air and talk about it. Okay. okay. Sounds Everyone, good. Everyone, have see a good then, one. Everyone. Later. Peace out.